Uh, welcome back, everybody, to the third episode of Recreating the Dino Game in Scratch. So, last episode, we learned how to recreate the obstacles. So, we used rocks, and this, as you can see, we are done with the rocks, we're done with the player, and today we're going to be working on aesthetic and really getting across that illusion of the screen moving. So we're going to do that by adding in objects that would move as you were running through planes. So whether that be trees or a cloud or maybe even some animals, it depends. But today we're just going to be focusing on like trees and natural objects. So off screen between last episode, I did uh, create this tree, this code right here, and it's relatively simple. I'll explain it. So basically, actually, I can create a new tree. You just go tree right here. You can see this. Yeah, you can see it right here. I use this texture and just uh, choose your sprite from the traditional sprite gallery. And I did the setup first. This is usually where you'd hide or go to your position. And I went to the back layer because this is a background. Whenever you're doing background, whenever you're doing background objects in your games, you should always put it to a, a layer behind your main, like main focus. So that's your, in this case, that's your obstacle and your player. So, of course, if I went like this, as you can see, as it goes, the tree goes behind the player and also behind the rock because the rock and the player are the main focus of the game. So the way I did this tree thing was, it's basically the same thing as the rocks. As you can see, I have this little glide to a uh, block, but I wanted to create the illusion that we we're in a forest. So I created multiple trees. And the way I did that was create a clone. You can find this in the control section right here, create a clone. And basically what it does is, it's pretty self-explanatory. It creates a clone of this, and you can use the when I start as clone block to control that clone. So for example, if I wanted to go over to looks and I wanted to set the size of this clone to 20%, you can see the code. Okay, so it's going, it's running across. Oops, I actually have to play the game. Running across. And as you can see, it goes across. And when it hits the edge right here, it hides. And then it creates a clone of itself. And that clone, that's when this, this thing goes off. When this thing goes off this block, this block starts. So when, this, when it creates a clone of itself, this clone will show itself. And this is not part of the actual script, so but this is just to demonstrate where the clone was. So what happens is this clone clones its this original sprite clones itself, and then as a clone, the clone teleports itself to the edge again, and then glides across the screen, and then disappears. So this is in a loop. What it basically does is it glides, hides at the edge teleports to the here, it waits two seconds, and this period of time, the clone has already gone and is already two seconds into its gliding. So it's probably right around the middle. And then it shows itself and it resets the, the loop. So it shows itself and then it goes and it starts gliding. And then while it's in the middle, right here, as you can see, I'll show you. This is the original, it hits the edge, and this is the clone 
and it's in the middle, this goes. And as you saw, when this original was in the middle, the clone was finished with its gliding, so it deleted itself. So it's, it, it's, it's pretty simple, but once it deletes itself, it's, this block is halfway, halfway done. So once this block is done, the original hides, creates a clone of itself. The clone teleports here, glides, and then this shows, glides, so it has the illusion of two trees going. Yeah, so that's pretty simple. I was just playing around with a variable here off camera. So let me just delete this. So now that we have the tree, it's pretty much the same thing for all other objects. So let's go choose a sprite and let's add in a cloud. Scratch has pretty cartoonish. Oops, I accidentally wrote cartoon. Has pretty cartoon like sprites. So if you want a more realistic sprite, you could either draw it, which I'm not very good at doing, or you could take it from the internet. So we're just gonna go cloud. I think this would fit it better. Let's see costumes with the cloud. Okay, the cloud has one costume. So we have the cloud here. We go to the tree. And since it's basically this exact same principle, the exact same uh, code, we can just copy and paste this into existence. So we have this, and we can copy. Cloud paste. So as you can see, I'll give you a little moment just to, if you guys are following along, this is the code. You guys can copy it down if you want, or you could try to recreate it yourself. So as you can see, since we recreated it, it's the same position. So we want it up here. In fact, we want it at different altitudes. So what we can do is at, at the repositioning stage, we can go to operators and we can do pick random y and we want it to be up here. So let's go lowest 125 and highest, let's go all the way up here. One twenty five, and let's do one seventy five. So now, oops, 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 oops. This is the clone. So we just have to copy this, paste it, put this here. Oops, no. Put this right here and also copy paste, put it here. So now we can put this back here. And now we just replaced all of our Y's with instead of having it the same plane as a tree, we have it in the sky. So if we play that now, whoop. And that is my fault. That is because our glide is still at twenty. So we want to bring this down. This should actually be eager. So we want to have it just glide to, through the sky. 
and clouds usually come down a little bit. So we're just going to keep it at one central point that's coming down. So I'd say 120, 120. So glide to 120. Glide to 120. All good. Now it should be, as you can see, that might be a little low. So let's go 130. Yep, that looks good. And now it's perfect. Of course, like I mentioned before, it's a little bit laggy now since I'm recording. But if you actually played this and recreated this, it should be pretty smooth. So now we have clouds and we also have trees. But let's see what happens. Yeah, see, since we have the exact same code, the clouds and the trees move at the same time. And we, won't, we don't want that. We want it to be a little bit delayed. So what we're going to do is we're just going to do something very simple and go to control. And we're just going to wait one second before our code starts. So see, now we got the trees and now they're not together. They're off by a little bit. But of course, it still looks like the trees are just cruising around with the clouds. And in reality, trees, if you're running, you're not moving. The clouds don't move with you unless you're going super fast. So realistically, you want the clouds glide to be longer. So we're actually going to introduce some randomness by going to operations, select random, and we're going to do five, actually no, we're going to do six to 10 seconds. So let's do that for everything else. Make sure you keep your code nice and tidy. Six to 10 seconds. And now, as you can see, the cloud goes across slower because it's a bigger object and it's farther away. Just like how the rock goes faster than the tree. Because in reality, the tree isn't near the rock. It's way behind you in the background. So yeah, you can see, spaced apart. And now do something about the game over screen. Now, really, it just stops everything but we can do something about that. Instead, we can create a new backdrop. And for this backdrop, we're just going to, oh, first, we're just gonna hide everything. Even the cloud. And we're just going to focus on this backdrop. So here we have our already made, already pre-made game over screen. So a lot of you, and when I mean a lot of you, I mean none of you. Uh, three of you actually are asking, how do you make text? Well, you don't actually have to draw it or use the pen feature in the code, but you can. You can actually use the text button right here. So I'm gonna set this text to red because I feel like that's pretty fitting. And I'm going to go to text. I'm gonna go and I'm going to change the font to something pixel. That's pretty, it's pretty good. 
let's click to create the text. As you can see, it works. So let's click it and let's do game. Oops. Oak. And now what you can do is just make it bigger. Move it in the center. Make sure it's centered. Make sure the cross is right on the target. As you can see, it's a little bit off center. So we're just going to adjust it. Yes, it looks a little bit off center still. I think that's, that's good enough. Just a little more. Yeah, that's good. Okay. So we have our game over screen. It's done. Now we have to have our default screen and we also have to have our game over screen. So in the setup version, so right here, setup, this isn't where we're going to do it. We're actually going to do it in the start game. And we don't, we don't really use the player other than for playing purposes. So that's jumping and mechanics. But jumping is done, so we're done with the player. So we can use the rock. So when we go start game, we have to go to looks and switch backdrop to level one day. So now you can see it's good. It's there. It's good. One of the things that I forgot to put. I accidentally hid this, which is something that you do have to do. So you have to do that while, while um, doing the game over screen or else you'll just have game over with rocks, cloud and a tree and a square just sitting there. So let's just put show. right here show in the setup and as you can see now show but what we're actually trying to do is start this game we need to set the backdrop and now the game is in motion but this is our code right here. This is our little game over sequence. But since we, so we can use this over and over, which we might not have to do, it depends. We're going to go game over in custom block. See, go to make a block and just type game over. And now we define game over with this. So now we have a game over thing. Start game, then we can put game over right here. And instead of doing this, we can go up and change the backdrop. So that's switch backdrop. The game over. And then we want to stop all. There it is. Stop all. So now that we have that, we should see. Boom. Oops. This might not have been a good idea. So. Let's just redo this. 
So as you can see, I actually reverted my changes and I, I deleted the custom block because there's a problem with Scratch where if you put a custom block next to a repeat until, then it really won't check because the infinity forever right here for some reason doesn't work when you're next to a repeat until. So here I have my switch backdrop and stop all. But first, if you see, it does work and we do switch to our game over screen. But like I said before, there's objects everywhere. So we're gonna have to do something about that. So let's go down to events and let's click when I receive and when I receive game over. And I'm just going to go and I'm going to select hide. And I'm just going to do this, copy it, paste this for every single, there it is, it's right here. I'm just going to paste it for every single one. So we have Where'd that go? Oh, it's over here. Okay, so we can bring that over here. Right there. All right, we're good. So now it should, boom, game over. And also we can do something with sound. So if we go to sound, we can play a sound. So maybe you want to maybe you want to record something or you could go to sounds, press this button and you can choose from Scratch's variety of sounds that they've provided you. Or of course, if you really wanted to, just If you really wanted to, you could go and you could upload a sound by pressing this. I'm just going to, I'm going to let Scratch surprise me. Looks like they did a ringtone, so let's see. Okay, so looks like every time I die or I game end, there's going to be a ringtone. So let's see. The rock comes out. There we go. And that is today's episode done. Uh, next, this is the project done. The dinosaur game has been completed. Actually, right before we go, we should do a little sequence here. And we should do a scoreboard. So what we can do is we can change this to instead of putting it just in an if, we can do if else also in the control. And we can go to uh, we can wait, we can delete this, put this in its place under the forever start game. And then if it's not touching, we can make the score. So I think make a variable for all score. So now, yeah, we can show it. And see, I can't put that there. So I'm just gonna change score by one. So in the top corner, you can see, and maybe like right here, since it's it's still showing, I can just go hide variable score when it's game over. So now, oh, that's another thing you gotta learn about variables. 
always reset them at the beginning of the game. So it's at zero. Boom. And that is the dinosaur game done. So my next plans for this channel is I'm going to recreate a scrolling platform game. And I might also do a tutorial on custom writing and also custom scoreboards. So expect that. Subscribe and like, and thank you for watching.